ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel for another third-party, unlicensed, 1-6 scale Darth Toys figure unboxing and review. Now today, oh yes, it's Rogue's Gallery time, we're taking a look at another classic member, it's Two-Face. Now do bear in mind, this is an unlicensed, unofficial product, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. I have put the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. If you are heading down to the description, why not think about hitting that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, it's pretty straightforward, an image of two faces, two faces, front and center. Unfortunately, the image is kinda low res and blurry, but who cares, we're not here for the box art, we're here for the actual figure. On the side of the box, Darth Toys and more graininess. On the back, two face plus a classic looking bow tie. Oh yes, that's pretty much exactly what the figure himself is going to be wearing. Now, I do currently have a two face in the classic Batman display, but he's wearing the black and white suit, a little bit more modern. Whereas this is straight up Golden Age two face. Yeah, this is what I'm here for. First in hand impressions are really positive, I love the vibrant colours. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories, all two foam blocks of them, laid out in the light box, take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, I really like it, it's a very modern style in terms of the shape, up top, two face, I dig the print, it matches the actual figure. Up front, Two-Face etched into a metal nameplate, we don't actually see that very often with third-party figures. Then up top, a regular crotch grabber. This is Two-Face, in case you forgot, it's written on the base twice, oh my god I only just got that, it's there two times, you get two bags of loot. They're brown fabric, they're full of pillow stuffing, nothing exciting. You've got some string up top, you can of course remove the pillow stuffing and put something else in there, it's entirely up to you. When it comes to weapons, once again, two. One that's a triple barreled shotgun, this is actually made of metal, which probably explains why the front is so heavy and springs down constantly, but I like the way it looks, especially that shiny metallic finish, because it's real metal. The handle does have a wood grain print, and so too does this front portion. I guess if you do have him holding it, he can support the weight in one of his hands. But the best gun here in my opinion, not just because of the actual look of the gun, but because of the blast effect, is the revolver. This isn't metal, it's made of plastic, but it's painted well enough, it looks like metal. The little hammer piece can move and the middle section can too, but... This blast effect is incredible, it's my new favourite thing, I want this on pretty much every gun in 1-6 scale that comes with future figures. The little post that pegs into the barrel is metal, so fingers crossed it shouldn't snap. I do like the translucent plastic, and of course the bullet up the front. Like I mentioned before with the bags of loot, you've got loot, multiple stacks of 10k, yeah they're fully printed, each of the notes are removable. If you wanted to stuff some in his pockets, in the loot bags, you absolutely can. For some of his smaller accessories you get a shot glass full of maybe whiskey, it looks like a liquid in a glass, totally fine with me. You also get a gold watch, the face is fully printed, and the best part about these is you can slide it over the wrist peg, so his wrist looks a little bit more seamless. Lastly, you do get a full array of hands. Unfortunately, the skin tone hands are terrible. They're made of this really hard plastic, you've got flashing, they're kind of waxy and glossy looking. They're not only really hard to put on the figure, but as I said, they're terrible looking as well. Whereas the green ones are really good. You've got a ton of texture, they look gross and nasty, plus this one is specifically molded to hold his coin. And the coin is removable, plus it's detailed on both sides, painted in a bright shiny silver with some washers in the crevices. What we are going to do now though is get Harvey Dent himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that, Darth Toys very clearly had a very clear vision 
they stuck to it, and long story short, they delivered. This is a really solid figure. Is he perfect? Maybe not. Is he perfect for me? Yeah, I think he is. Starting off with the body, it's a regular true type run-of-the-mill body, slim but well built. The suit hugs the body perfectly and can I just say that suit is such a vibe. I love the colours, I love the pattern. Could someone pull that off IRL? I don't know, maybe, but I know for sure I definitely couldn't. Overall, even though it's pretty early on in the video, I'm really happy. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the head sculpt first. I really like it. Some people prefer the blue, other people prefer red, but green is straight up classic, and with this outfit, it gels beautifully. But beautiful isn't a word I would use to describe the green half, it's nasty. You've got a ton of texture for the disfigured flesh, I like the grey hair. There's also some yellow dry brushing on top of the green, and the eye kind of looks like it's decaying, it's yellow. Whereas on the Harvey Dent side, he kind of looks like a 60s style gangster, happen to really like that too. The skin texture is well painted, it looks kind of realistic, but also comic booky at the same time. That's kind of how I'd describe the outfit too, I mean, technically speaking, it's really well done. It hugs the body in all the right places, it looks like a proper tailored suit. You wouldn't be seeing anyone buying a yellow and purple suit off the rack, so of course it's tailored. On the inside, some polka dot lining. I do like the purple and the yellow, it's a decent contrast, plus the pattern looks good. He also has proper working pockets, so if you wanted to stuff some cash in there, you definitely can. You do have some real working buttons as well, they are metal. So if you're a glutton for punishment, you can sit down for hours and do up his jacket. I'm not, so for me, it's going to be undone. His white shirt is white. You've got some gold faux buttons. Then the bow tie is done in the same colour as the jacket. Purple on one side with a pattern, then yellow on the other. You do have a little bit of his shirt cuff poking out from underneath his jacket. I do appreciate that detail. Then the pants, to nobody's surprise I'm sure, match the jacket. Purple once again, pattern yellow on the other. A pleather belt with a real metal belt buckle. Then coming down to the ankles, unfortunately no socks, but one red shoe and one black one. There's some shading on the lighter sections and underneath you've got some sculpted in tread. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, this looks so darn good. It's Darth Toy's Two-Face and Sideshow's classic look and Dark Knight. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. Is this going to be my new Two-Face in the collection alongside this Batman? Oh, you bet it is. I will be replacing this Batman when the SSR 1970s one comes out, but for now, Two-Face is a little bit shorter, and the Dark Knight a little bit taller. Speaking of taller and shorter, here's my current comic book Two-Face, it's the M-Toys one. A little bit taller, completely different aesthetic. He's a lot more modern, whereas Darth Toys is a lot more classic. Which one do I prefer? I don't know, I like them both, but I can't help myself. My eye is still being drawn to the bright colours on the new one. Going over articulation, do bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a fixed neck with a ball joint at the bottom. Looking forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms do go out to there, a little bit squeaky. They do go forward and back, super squeaky. Butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow going past 90, plus a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg in green on one side and skin tone on the other. You do have a crunch forward and back for the midsection, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs do go forward to there on very clicky ratchets going out to there. Swivel at the upper thigh, ratcheted double bend at the knee going past 90, plus of course a double ball peg down here for the ankle. Wrapping up on Darth Toy's classic retro Golden Age Two-Face, this is what I've been waiting for forever. I'm hoping Darth Toys keep this line going. I want a purple outfit Catwoman, I want a retro classic looking Penguin, a Riddler, Let's get the whole rogues gallery in here, because Two-Face is a really strong start. I love the accessories, you get a whole ton of them. The blast effect for the gun being my personal favourite. 
As for the figure himself though, the body is a regular true type body. Nothing all that special, nothing to write home about, at the very least one arm is green and the other is skin tone. You do also have some super tight sturdy joints, maybe too tight because they fight you just a little, but that does mean he shouldn't topple over in the display. The one thing that Darth toys always seem to nail is the clothing, and they did here as well. It hugs the body in all the right places, I love the colour, I love the pattern. Honestly, this might be one of their best suits to date, and they've made some really strong ones. Then the head sculpt. The head sculpt is the one thing that needs to be good to sell this figure. Luckily, it is good. It's got that classic feel, it's kinda goofy but kinda scary. The green works for me, it might not for you, but if you're going off the golden age look, then this is it right here. Don't forget though, this is third party and it is unlicensed, it's an unofficial figure. It wasn't made by DC, it wasn't made by Sideshow, it was made by Daft Toys in an unofficial capacity. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.